In this video, we're talking about yet another severe weather outbreak coming on Friday. The Storm Prediction Center has already put out an enhanced risk for severe weather with a 10% chance of tornadoes. We're going to look at the forecast models, which are really bullish with these storms right now, and they are starting to paint a very concerning picture. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Guys, I finally got to take the Storm Seeker home. That's right. The Storm Seeker is finished enough for me to drive it around, and now it's at my house, and I'm tinkering with it, and I'm, you know, making sure everything's right uh, before I go on my first storm chase. Now, I know a lot of you guys are interested in the Storm Seeker. I promise you I'm going to make a very awesome video showing the truck, showing all of the ins and outs, all the gizmos and gadgets with some really high quality footage of it out on the road. You know, like I, I just want to make a cool video because it's a cool truck, but it will still be about a month, if not longer, before that happens because there's a couple more things that we're waiting on before the truck is 100% finished. It's drivable right now. It's chaseable right now but it's not ready for that final big reveal YouTube video. You know what I mean? However, if you are a channel member, if you're a storm seeker, then later today or maybe early tomorrow, I'm going to be uploading a members only video with a sneak peek, a first look uh, with vlog style. I'll be holding the camera, uh, going around the truck, uh, showing you all the parts and, and, and showing you the plans for the future and stuff. So if you're a member, you get a first look sneak peek. So yeah, I'm really excited to go storm chasing and you'll hear me talk a lot about it here. But for now, let's go ahead and start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And look at that big old swirl, son. You see in this, this is a big, massive storm right now in the United States that's quickly ejecting off to the north and east. And on the eastern and southern side, we've got rain and thunderstorms. In fact, we just had a tornado warning down here near the I-22 corridor near Tupelo, Mississippi. And also there was a tornado warning south of New Orleans down here in Louisiana. Obviously, by the time this video goes up, these storms will be way past those areas. But I'm just showing you that this line of storms storms is still packing a punch, but it will fizzle out quickly as it moves off to the east, okay? Now, a secondary area of storms is going to fire up today, giving us another small shot of some severe weather. And then after that, a much bigger storm starts to form up, and that's going to be the main topic of today. So let's start looking at the weather models. All right, here's a look at the high resolution rapid refresh model. This is what the radar could look like as we go later on into the day today. We're going to start this out right around the time this video should go up around 9 a.m. Eastern. You can always see the time above my head. And as you can see, our broken line of showers and thunderstorms is still moving off to the east, but it's weakening now. Uh, most of these storms at this point should be below severe limits uh, with the isolated incident that is uh, that, you know, there's still some small hail or something like that. But as I push this forward, you'll see that that weakens significantly as it moves off to the east. Once this gets into central Kentucky, southern Indiana, this is just some light rain and showers. You might hear some thunder here and there, but what's going to happen is they're actually going to reform, recycle up here around two to four. 4 p.m. today, you can see some stronger storms forming up here in central Kentucky, uh, south central and eastern Tennessee, northern and northeastern Georgia, and even all the way up in here into northern Indiana, moving into Michigan, uh, we're going to be talking about some bigger storms moving in today. And these storms do have a marginal threat with them, okay? We've got a broad area that has a 2% chance of tornadoes from the Gulf of Mexico to Atlanta through eastern Tennessee and eastern Kentucky, all the way up through uh, Cincinnati, Columbus. We, you know, we have a non-zero chance of tornadoes today with these storms. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a small chance of tornadoes today, but if they do happen, they'll happen somewhere with the, you know, one of these storms that pops up uh, from Georgia all the way up into Michigan later today. So we got to watch those carefully as we move forward. I think the main threat with these storms is going to be some gusty winds are going to be a problem. This is showing a, a convective linear system forming in northern Kentucky and then moving through the Ohio River Valley into the Columbus area around 7 p.m. tonight. If that happens, we might see some uh, wind damage down down here in Southern Ohio. So once again, guys, just make sure you're weather aware today. Make sure you have a way of getting a severe weather warnings and you'll be fine. Once again, this is not going to be a widespread, devastating, severe weather outbreak today, uh, but it's something to watch out for, uh, for sure. And then at, even as we go later on into the night, 9 PM tonight, we're still seeing more storms forming up here in Southern Ohio, uh, Eastern Kentucky, uh, Eastern Tennessee, and now down into North Carolina and South Carolina. Uh, and once again, still rumbles of thunder, some small hail possible as far north 
as Flint, Michigan later this evening. So really interesting stuff. And as I back this up, look at the circulation over here on this storm, guys. Like this is like a land hurricane or something's what it looks like. <laughs> look at that. Let me show you the infrared satellite simulation here. This is a really cool feature on the HRRR, but look at that. That is absolutely magnificent. Just a beautiful, massive storm as it sweeps across the United States. But unfortunately, I do think that this one is nothing compared to the next one that we're going to see that's going to pop up on Friday. Let's look at that now. All right, here's a look at our next threat, our next big severe weather outbreak. Once again, guys, the Storm Prediction Center has already put out an enhanced risk for severe weather, a 10% chance of tornadoes, and then even in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we have a 30% chance of significant damaging hail, and then all the way from eastern Texas into western Alabama, we have a large area of possibly a significant damaging wind with a 30% probability there. So those are really high probabilities for being a day two outlook. We'll wouldn't be surprised that this ends up being a moderate risk event. Uh, unbelievably. It's crazy how many moderate and high risk events we've already had uh, so far this year in this area, uh, but this one definitely warrants it and I'm going to explain why right now. So once again, here's our storm that we've been looking at. We've been tracking for days. That's going to move out of here and we're not going to be talking about that much anymore uh, around Thursday, April 8th at 11 p.m. But as soon as the clock hits midnight, <laughs> we're talking about a new storm. We've actually, you can't see it on radar here, but we've got a system dipping down in from the Rockies that's going to come down here, interact with some very warm, Gulf moist air and we're going to be talking about a big storm system firing up starting around 11 a.m. on Friday. First thing we're going to look at here is the radar and the timing then we'll go back and look at the severe weather parameters okay. So storms look to start firing up in Oklahoma and Kansas around 11 a.m. on Friday. We're going to take this one frame at a time look at that literally one hour later we've got strong storms now uh, moving across the Oklahoma and Arkansas border. Arkansas you guys were under the gun yesterday with the um, possibility for some pretty significant weather and there were tornadoes uh, and there was a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings but I think that this situation is going to be even more intense for you so if you live in Arkansas and you weren't very impressed by the severe weather yesterday don't let your guard down okay make sure you're prepared for this next storm because I think it's going to be worse now let's keep pushing this forward and as you can see that first area of convection heads off to the north and east that's going to bring some possible severe weather into southern Missouri and western Tennessee as it moves on and then we have another big area of storm forming here in Oklahoma around 4 p.m. Look at this, 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Uh, these are possible supercell thunderstorms here sparking up. If we can get some of these cells to pop up by themselves and take advantage of all of the uh, resources out there in the atmosphere, they could definitely rotate, and we do have that uh, tornado threat. But even more importantly, we have a Big time hail threat over here, okay? Uh, gorilla hail, all right? I put gorilla hail in the title. A lot of you guys, <laughs> when I put that up there, you don't know what I'm talking about. It, it's just, it's what we call... <laughs> monster hail okay anything bigger than 2.5 inches in diameter anything that can cause significant extreme damage to your car or your house is gorilla hail okay and that's what we're talking about here uh, near Tulsa at 6 p.m. on Friday and then here's where it becomes extremely interesting okay according to the HRRR this is going to turn into a uh, quasi linear convective system turn into a bow echo a squall line of strong to severe thunderstorms that's going to pack a punch with the damaging winds. Also, you can see we've got another area of storms over here along the Mississippi River Valley, and these storms are also ones to watch for tornadic activity. Unfortunately, this, you know, there's going to be a pretty broad area of lower level jet stream. I'll show you that later. That's going to be ramping up here, and there's going to be a lot of convective energy out there for these storms to work with. So, especially on the southern side down here, even down here in Louisiana, we got to watch these storms on Friday evening. Unfortunately, it's another nocturnal tornado threat, uh, but there is going to be, there will be tornadoes on this day. Okay, I don't know if it'll be an outbreak. I don't know if it'll be widespread, but somebody down here just because of the way the atmosphere is setting up is going to see tornadoes. So we got to take this storm seriously. Make sure you're prepared. Make sure you have a NOAA weather radio. I've got a link in my description. You guys, you need one of these. Okay, you can sleep. You can go to sleep. That weather radio is going to wake you up if there's a tornado warning. Okay, and obviously if there is a moderate risk, I will be going live to cover this. Uh, so make sure you tune into my live stream as well. So let's keep pushing this forward. And these storms, once again, 
once again down here in Louisiana are pretty concerning looking as uh, around 9 p.m. I do believe we might have a tornado threat down here. Uh, and then here's our big uh, multi quasi linear convective system uh, just slamming down to the south and east. Once again, uh, straight line damaging wind is going to be a big problem here as those move down. And then look at here around 10 p.m. Uh, this is showing possibly some supercell thunderstorms popping up in front of the line. Once again, tornado threat is there. We got to watch out for that in northeast Texas. And, and then even over here in western Alabama and, and Mississippi, there's so much going on. You see how I'm having to ba bounce back and forth? This is going to be a widespread severe weather outbreak uh, with just embedded possibilities for significant hail, wind, and tornadoes. Look at this, guys. That moves into the Nashville area. This is starting to convect up multiple supercell thunderstorms in Mississippi and Louisiana and southeastern Arkansas now. And then we have this giant uh, bow echo uh, possibly causing uh, widespread straight line damaging wind problems from northeast Texas all the way through Arkansas. And then, yeah, yeah that, that's as far out as the HRRR goes. Now let's check out the NAM model because we can actually go out a little bit further in the future and we can see how this is going to affect Alabama and, and Tennessee and the, and the eastern states a little bit more. So let's rewind and let's change our model. So here's the NAM 3 kilometer model. It's a little bit lower resolution and this one has a little bit of a different timing uh, going on with it. So, you know, it's very important that you guys watch the video tomorrow because it's gonna we're going to have a lot more information to work with tomorrow i'll be able to tell you pretty much exactly when everything's going to start and stop so make sure you're subscribed with those notifications on and then once again though this the, the nam model still shows a giant area of straight line damaging winds moving from the dallas fort worth area all the way up into uh, southeastern missouri there and then slamming off to the east uh, let's actually go over to the east and watch this go all the way through Alabama, Central Tennessee, and then into Georgia before it really starts to weaken there. There's a lot of questions about, you know, where the tornado threat will be, where the hail threat will be, where the wind threat will be. The only questions that we don't have is that something's going to happen. I know for a fact that we are going to have big time storms on Friday and Saturday. And uh, let me show you why. Convective available potential energy. This is the uh, energy storms need to uh, form. Okay. You, if, if you guys have been watching for a while, you've heard me harp on about this Cape. I want you to look at this. Okay. Because this is definitely the most impressive uh, convective energy profile I've shown on this channel ever. To be fair, um, this is the first severe weather season I've done on this channel, <laughs> uh, but we are talking about Cape values uh, nearing 5,000 joules per kilogram in some areas down here. Uh, this is uh, absolutely off the charts. And once again, we've got storms forming here and taking advantage of that Cape as they move off to the east and southeast. And you can see it get eaten up there very quickly as we move on. And yeah, guys, that, that is one of the reasons why I am absolutely certain that we are going to see some big storms. Look at this, 7 p.m. Friday, we're at 5,000... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 5,500 joules per kilogram of Cape. Uh, some of our biggest storm systems th this year that we've looked at, the March 25th tornado outbreak, Cape was only at 3,000, okay? Now, it's important to note that, you know, convective energy isn't the only thing that determines the severity of storms, especially when it comes to tornadoes. In fact, too much Cape can be bad for tornadoes because you get over convection and you need those discrete supercells for tornadoes to form. So another pretty concerning thing to look at here is the lower level jet stream. And, and once again, right around the time these storms start to form up in, in Arkansas and Louisiana, especially on the eastern side of that convection, uh, we're going to be talking about lower level jet stream winds nearing 60 or 70 knots, guys. Uh, so the shear is there. The convective uh, energy is there. Uh, the only thing that I think is going to stop this from being a widespread uh, tornado outbreak is the fact that there's so much convection, there's so much energy that it's just quickly going to turn into a squall line of storms. And don't get me wrong, those can still be bad, but not as bad as a widespread tornado outbreak. But there will definitely be embedded tornadoes in that line, and we will be watching closely for those supercells to form out in front of the line, guys. This is a serious one. Uh, this is another one that we have to watch closely. This is probably going to be another uh, long live stream on this channel, unfortunately. So make sure, uh, this is the third time I've said this now, <laughs> make sure you subscribe with notifications on because I do think we are entering primetime storm watching mode, okay? So here we go again. All right, that's all the weather talk I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm not going to say it for the fourth time, but you know what to do. <laughs> Once again, look forward to that members only video of the Storm Seeker. And if you can't become a member, that's totally fine. Like uh, you'll eventually see it once it's completely done. And the video that I'm going to make for this channel for the public is going to be 
absolutely insane. So also, if you want to see little updates here and there, uh, I'm posting that on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all that stuff. So make sure you follow me over there. All right. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Goodbye. Woo!